going to start. My name is Valerie Wolfe. In listening to the testimony today, it all sounds really familiar. I am here to talk about a possible link between radiation and mind control experimentation that began in the late 1940s. The main reason that mind control research is being mentioned is because people are alleging that they were exposed as children to mind control, radiation, drugs, and chemical experimentation, which were administered by the same doctors who are known to have been involved in conducting both radiation and mind control research. Written documentation has been provided revealing the names of people and the names of research projects in statements from people across the country. It is also important to understand that mind control techniques and follow-ups into adulthood may have been used to intimidate these particular research subjects into not talking about their victimization in government research. As a therapist for the past 22 years, I have specialized in treating victims and perpetrators of trauma and their families. When word got out that I was appearing at this hearing, nearly 40 therapists across the country, and I had about a week and a half to prepare, contacted me to talk about clients who had reported being subjects in radiation and mind control experiments. The consistency of people's stories about the purpose of the mind control and pain induction techniques such as electric shock, use of hallucinogens, sensory deprivation, hypnosis, dislocation of limbs, and sexual abuse is remarkable. There is almost nothing published on this aspect of mind control used with children, and these clients come from all over the country having had no contact with each other. What was startling was that therapists reported many of these clients were also physically ill with autoimmune problems, thyroid problems, multiple sclerosis, and other muscle and connective tissue diseases, as well as mysterious ailments for which a diagnosis cannot be found. While somatization disorder is commonly found in these clients, many of the clients who've been involved in the human experimentation with the government have multiple medically documented physical ailments. And I was really shocked today to hear one of the speakers talk about the cysts and the teeth breaking off because I have a client that that's happening to. Many people are afraid to tell their doctors their histories as mind control subjects for fear of being considered to be crazy. These clients have named some of the same people particularly a Dr. Green, who was associated with clients' reports of childhood induction of pain, mind control techniques, and childhood sexual abuse. One of my clients who had seen him with a name tag identified him as Dr. L. Wilson Green. A person with this same name was the scientific director of the chemical and radiological laboratories at the Army Chemical Center, and that he was engaged in doing research for the Army and other intelligence agencies. Other names that have come to light are Dr. Sidney Gottlieb and Dr. Martin Orn, who it is reported were also involved in radiation research. It needs to be made clear that people have remembered these names and events spontaneously, with free recall, and without the use of any memory retrieval techniques such as hypnosis. As much as possible, we have tried to verify the memories with family members, records, and experts in the field. Many attempts have been made through Freedom of Information Act filings to gain access to the mind control research documentation. These requests have generally been slowed down or denied, although some information has been obtained, which suggests that at least some of the information supplied by these clients is true. It is important that we obtain all of the information contained in the CIA and military files to verify or deny our clients' memories. Although many of the files for MK Ultra may have been destroyed, whatever is left, along with the files for other projects, such as Bluebird and Artichoke, to name only two, contain valuable information. Furthermore, if, as the evidence suggests, some of these people were used in radiation experiments, there might be information in the mind control experiment files on radiation experiments. 
we need this information to help in the rehabilitation and treatment of many people who have severe psychological and medical problems which interfere with their social, emotional, and financial well-being. Finally, I urge you to recommend an investigation into these matters. Although there was a commission on mind control, it did not include experiments on children because most of them were too young or still involved in the research in the late 1970s to come forward. The only way to end the harassment and suffering of these people is to make public what has happened to them in the mind control experiments. Please recommend that there be an investigation and that the files be opened on the mind control experiments as they related to children. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm Christy Nicola, born July of 1962, rendering me 32 years of age. I was a subject in radiation as well as mind control and drug experiments performed by a man I knew as Dr. Green. My parents were divorced around 1966 and Donald Richard Ebner, my natural father, was involved with Dr. Green in the experiments. I was a subject from 1966 to 1976. Dr. Green performed radiation experiments on me in 1970, focusing on my neck, throat, and chest, 1972, focusing on my chest and my uterus in 1975. Each time I became dizzy, nauseous, and threw up. All these experiments were performed on me in conjunction with mind control techniques and drugs in Tucson, Arizona. Dr. Green was using me mostly as a mind control subject from 1966 to 1973. His objective was to gain control of my mind and train me to be a spy assassin. The first significant memory took place at Kansas City University in 1966. Don Ebner took me there by plane when my mom was out of town. I was in what looked like a laboratory and there seemed to be other children. I was strapped down, naked, spread eagle, on a table, on my back. Dr. Green had electrodes on my body, including my head. He used what looked like an overhead projector and repeatedly said he was burning different images into my brain while a red light flashed aimed at my forehead. In between each sequence, he used electric shock on my body and told me to go deeper and deeper, deeper while repeating each image would go deeper into my brain and I would do whatever he told me to do. I felt drugged because he had given me a shot before he started the procedure. When it was over, he gave me another shot. The next thing I remember, I was with my grandparents again in Tucson, Arizona. I was four years old. You can see from this experiment that Dr. Green used trauma, drugs, post-hypnotic suggestion, and more trauma in an effort to gain total control of my mind. He used me in radiation experiments both for the purposes of determining the effects of radiation on various parts of my body and to terrorize me as an additional trauma in the mind control experiments. The rest of the experiments took place in Tucson, Arizona, out in the desert. I was taught how to pick locks, be secretive, use my photographic memory, and a technique to withhold information by repeating numbers to myself. Dr. Green moved on to wanting me to kill dolls that looked like real children. I stabbed a doll with a spear once after being severely traumatized, but the next time I refused. He used many pain induction techniques but as I got older, I resisted more and more. He often tied me down in a cage, which was near his office. Between 1972 and 1976, he and his assistants were sometimes careless and left the cage unlocked. Whenever physically possible, I snuck into his office and found files with reports and memos addressed to CIA and military personnel. Included in these files were project, subproject, subject, and experiment names with some code numbers for radiation and mind control experiments, which I have submitted in your written documentation. I was caught twice 
and Dr. Green ruthlessly used electric shock, drugs, spun me on a table, put shots in my stomach, in my back, dislocated my joints, and hypnotic techniques to make me feel crazy and suicidal. Because of my rebellion and growing lack of cooperation, they gave up on me as a spy assassin. Consequently, the last two years, 1974 to 1976, Dr. Green used various mind control techniques to reverse the spy assassin messages to self-destruct and death messages. His purpose? He wanted me dead and I struggled to stay alive all of my adult life. All of my adult life. I believe it is by the grace of God that I am still alive. These horrible experiments have profoundly affected my life. I developed multiple personality disorder because Dr. Green's goal was to split my mind into as many parts as possible so he could control me totally. He failed, but I've had to endure years of constant physical, mental, and emotional pain even to this day. I've been in therapy consistently for 12 years, and it wasn't until I found my current therapist two and a half years ago who had knowledge of the mind control experiments that I've finally been able to make real progress and begin to heal. In closing, I ask that you keep in mind that the memories I've described are but a glimpse of the countless others that took place over the 10 years between 1966 and 1976 that they weren't just radiation, but mind control and drug experiments as well. I have included more detailed information of what I remember in your written documentation. Please help us by recommending an investigation and making the information available so that therapists and other mental health professionals can help more people like myself. I know I can get better. I am getting better. And I know others can too, with the proper help. Please help us in an effort to prevent these heinous acts from continuing in the future. Thank you very much. In 1957 and 1984, I became a pawn in the government scheme whose ultimate goal was mind control and to create the perfect spy, all through the use of chemicals, radiation, drugs, hypnosis, electric shock, isolation in tubs of water, sleep deprivation, brainwashing, verbal, physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. I was exploited unwittingly for nearly three decades of my life. And the only explanations given to me were that, quote, the end justifies the means, and, quote, I was serving my country in their bold effort to fight communism. I can only summarize my circumstances by saying they took an already abused seven-year-old child and compounded my suffering beyond belief. The saddest part is I know for a fact that I was not alone. There were countless other children in my same situation, and there was no one to help us until now. I've already submitted as much information as possible, including conversations uh, overheard of the people, agencies responsible. I'm able to report all this to you in such detail because of my photographic memory and the arrogance of the doctors, the arrogance of the people involved. They were certain they would always control my mind. Although the process of recalling these atrocities is not an easy one, nor is it without some danger to myself and my family. I feel the risk is worth taking. Dr. L. Wilson Green, who claimed to have received $50 million from the Edgewood Chemical and Radiology Laboratory as part of the T TSD, or Technical Science Division of the CIA, once described to Dr. Charles Brown that, quote, children were used as subjects because they were more fun to work with and cheaper, too. They needed lower profile subjects than soldiers or government people, so only young, willing females would do. Besides, he said, I like scaring them. They in the agency think I'm a god, creating subjects and experiments for whatever deviant purposes Sid and James can think up. 
Sid being Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, James, Dr. James Hamilton. In 1958, I was to be tested, they told me, by some important doctors but from the society or the Human Ecology Society. And I was instructed to cooperate. I was told not to look at anyone's faces and not try hard not to ignore to try hard not to ignore any names, as this was a very secret project. But I was told to be brave and all these things would help me forget. Naturally, as most children do, I did the opposite and remembered as much as I could. But Dr. John Gittinger tested me, Dr. Cameron gave me the shocks, and Dr. Green the x-rays. Then I was told by Sid Gottlieb that, quote, I was right for the big A, or meaning artichoke. By the time I left to go home, just like every time from then on, I would remember only whatever explanations Dr. Robert G. Heath at Tulane Medical University gave me for the odd bruises, needle marks, burns on my head, fingers, and even the genital soreness. I had no reason to believe otherwise. They had already begun to control my mind. The next year, I was sent to a lodge in Maryland called Deep Creek Cabins to learn how to sexually please men. I was taught how to coerce them into talking about themselves. And it was, doc it was uh, Richard Helms, who was deputy director of the CIA, Dr. Gottlieb, uh, kept George White, Morris Allen, who all planned on filming as many high government agency officials and heads of academic institutions and foundations as possible, so that later when the fund funding for mind control and radiation started to dwindle, projects would continue. I was used to entrap many unwitting men, including themselves, all with the use of a hidden camera. I was only nine years old when this sexual humiliation began. I overheard conversations about a part of the agency called ORD, which I found out was Office of Research and Development. It was run by Dr. Green, Dr. Stephen Aldrich, Martin Orne, and Morris Allen. Once a crude remark was made by Dr. Gottlieb about a certain possible leak over <coughs> New Orleans East involving a large group of retarded children who are being given massive doses of radiation. He asked, why was Wilson so worried about a few retarded kids? After all, they would be the least likely to spill the beans. Another time, I heard Dr. Martin Orne who was the director then of the scientific office and later the head of the Institute for Experimental Research state that, quote, in order to keep more funding coming from different sources for radiation and mind control projects, he suggested stepping up the amounts of stressors used and also the blackmail portion of the experiments. He said it needed to be done faster than to get rid of the subjects or they were asking for us to come back later and haunt them with our rem remembrances. There's much more I could tell you about government-sponsored research, including project names, sub-project numbers, people involved, facilities used, tests, and other forms of pain induction. But I think I've given more than enough information to recommend further investigation of all the mind control projects, especially as they involve so much use of the radiation. I would love nothing more than to say that I dream the hooks up and need just to forget it. But that would be a tragic mistake. It would also be a lie. All these atrocities did occur to me and to countless other children, and all under the guise of defending our country. It is because of the cumulative effects of exposure to radiation, chemicals, drugs, pain, and subsequent mental and physical distress that I've been robbed of the ability to work and even to bear any children of my own. It is blatantly obvious that none of this was needed, nor should it ever have been allowed to take place at all. And the only means we have to seek out the awful truth and bring it to light is by opening whatever files remain on all the projects and through another presidential commission on mind control. I believe that every citizen of this nation has the right to know just what is fact and what is fiction. It is our greatest protection against the possibility of this ever happening again. In conclusion, I can offer you no more than what I've given you today, the truth, and I thank you for your time.